Welcome to Finance and Excel video number 89. Hey, if you want to download this workbook for chapter 9, click on the link directly below the video and scroll all the way down to the Finance Excel class section. In this video, this is our last video for chapter 9, we're going to talk about sensitivity analysis. Now in our last video, we did scenario analysis and the difference between the two is, well, scenario analysis, we looked at four variables at a time. And with scenario analysis, we got different net present values based on pessimistic and optimistic assumptions. So it, it helped us um, see what forecast risk there is in our assumptions. Forecast risk is just the risk that our assumptions are not correct. So we had four variables here. Sensitivity analysis, we just change one. So here's our one variable we're going to look at. We're going to change units sold, and then we want to see what happens to net present value. And this will show us the forecast risk for just this one variable. All right, here's our assumptions. Uh, cost of the project is this, salvage zero. Straight line for five years, RRR, tax rate, no networking capital. Let's calculate our depreciation. Straight line, <clears throat> as we've mentioned a number of times already, makers is the most appropriate one for our cash flow analysis. But to make this easy, we're using straight line. We had a couple great videos earlier in this sequence that showed makers, though. All right, there's our depreciation. Now, we're going to calculate. We'll do our base operating cash flow first and then our net present value. And we're going to use the last couple of videos, we used the tax shield method for calculating operating cash flow, so we're going to do that again here. First, we want to calculate uh, all of the sales and subtract out the variable cost and fixed cost. So the way we're going to do that is first we're going to calculate gross profit per product for one product. So the price is 72 minus our assumed variable cost. Right? That tells us the profit 17 bucks every time we sell, gross profit every time we sell one product. We'll multiply that times our units. That will give us uh, our gross profit, F2. And then we're going to subtract from that our total fixed cost. That'll give us our uh, profit, in essence, before subtracting out depreciation. So this amount we need to multiply times 1 minus the tax rate. So in essence, what we're doing here is we're saying that's our profit. We're going to, for every $1, we're going to subtract out 34 cents. The only bit of cash flow information we need still is our depreciation cash benefit from uh, the our income, our tax return, so we say plus the full depreciation. Remember, that's a non-cash expense thrown on to our tax return. So we it saves us this amount of tax. So that little bit right, that little extra bit right there, $1,700 cash we're adding back in. All right, so that's our operating cash flow estimate. Now, we could lock all these and copy and over, over and over and just leave that one cell reference relative, but I'm going to show you another little trick here. I'm going to copy this in edit mode, and then I'm going to come over here in edit mode and control V. And see that little purple box That's the or lavender box? That's the only one I need to move, so I'm going to point to the edge. That's the move cursor. You can move it wherever you want, but be sure let go of it on the right one. So tab, tab, edit mode, control V, and I'm going to move it. That's the move cursor. Wow, so we have um, some positive cash operating cash flows. Now we can calculate our net present value for each one of these. The rate, I'm going to click there and lock it. That's our required return, comma, and then the value. Oh, we're going to do that same thing we did last video. Since we don't have the whole spread of values, we're simply going to notice that the net present value function can allow us to uh, just put in values. So the first one is this, and we don't have any networking capital, so we just put our cash flows in one comma. So I'm typing a comma to get to the next one, comma, 
one, two, three, four, five. Close parentheses, and then we need to subtract out the cost. So it's just the cost right there. And now we can copy this over. We left all of those relative, so those will move. And no, no, that one needs to be locked. So we're going to have to come here and lock it with the F4 key. So that one's locked the rate and the cost at time 0. OK, so we have a negative, a positive, and then a bigger positive. So as we change just this one variable, we can see uh, net, how net present value changes. Now, really what we should do is make a chart. Now, for a XY scatter, I would like to list units sold this way and the net present value because I want to plot it. But I, these are horizontal, and I need them to go this way. So there's a quick way to do this. You can use the transpose function. Now you can do it one at a time like this, equals this, enter, equals this, enter, equals this, enter. But I'm going to show you the transpose, and it's a special kind of function. You have to highlight all of the cells in advance, and you type equals transpose, transpose. You've got to make sure that 1, 2, 3, 4, rows, 1, 2, 3, 4, match the 1, 2, 3, 4 columns up here, or else it won't work. And then I'm going to close parentheses. And you can't just hit Enter. You have to hold Control, Shift, and then Enter, because this is a special kind of function called Array Function. So Control, Shift, Enter. And then we'll do the same thing here, equals Transpose. Control, Shift, and Enter. It's a special kind of function. And it's got a special kind of syntax. See those curly brackets? You can't type those in. But that is, when you do Control, Shift, Enter, you're saying, hey, Excel, I know this is an array function that goes into many cells at once. And that's array. That's Excel uh, talking back to you, saying, I understood that it's an array function. All right, so we have our data transposed here. Now we can highlight just these. This is going to be the X. This is the Y for a scatter chart with a line. So I'll go up to Insert, Scatter, because there's two numbers here. And then I'm going to plot it. Looks ridiculous right now. I'm going to point to the edge and then click and drag in, just to make it a little bit smaller. The main thing I want to do is change this axis, because you can see our range is from 9,000 to 11,000. So I'm going to click on the axis and right click Format Axis or Control 1. And we want Minimum, Fixed. So 8,500. I went 500 below that one. And then Maximum, Fixed. And I'm going to go 500 above that. Close. OK, so that's already looking much better. Uh, maybe I'm going to click and drag and make it a little bit bigger here. We can see that there, it is uh, sloping upwards. This is a direct relationship between the x and the y. That means as we increase our units, the net present value increases. Now, let's th that's not right right there, so I'm going to come over here. I don't want those decimals. I'm going to escape out of the chart. I'm going to highlight this. And I'm going to Control-1. Notice Control-1 is Format Cells or Format Chart Element. And I'm going to go to General. You can see that changes it. So that means the chart is linked to the formatting there. I'm going to click here on the title, and then click up here, and type an equal sign, and then click on D10, Enter. With this still highlighted, I'm going to immediately go up and change it to 8 or whatever font size. So I change the font size by highlighting that. All right, so uh, sensitivity analysis. As units sold change, what does net present value do? That's what this is telling us. That's the definition of s sensitivity analysis. The steeper the line, the more forecast risk associated with this variable. Now let's see if we can um, actually figure out what that steepness is. Now, um, 
there's a slope function. So we can try the slope just to estimate uh, what our, it'll tell us for every one unit change in this line, slope will tell us for every one unit change in this line how much it goes up. And that's what we're interested in here. Equals slope. The y's and x's. So you have to know that this one's the y. In essence, what's happening here is this is the predictor variable, the independent variable. This is the one, as we change this, this one changes, right? So y's first, comma, and then x's. So we have 37. So for every one uh, unit change in units sold, we have 37.61 change in net present value. All right, uh, that's chapter 9. We'll see you next chapter.